Buying a home is a big deal, and it's scary with all the money at stake. So today, I'll be addressing nine avoidable mistakes that home buyers make time and time again. It's important to note that these nine avoidable mistakes are not, I repeat, not listed in any particular order, but be sure to stick around for the very last one because it may be the most heartbreaking one of them all. The first avoidable mistake is assuming that you need a 20% down payment, but that's simply not always the case. Financing with three or three and a half percent down or, or even no money down is quite common these days. Plus, there are all sorts of down payment assistance programs out there, some which could potentially get you into a new home for just a few thousand bucks. And I'm not just talking about VA financing here either. Check with the local realtor for some reputable lenders to see what programs might be available to you. Call them and compare them. There are numerous programs that can help with your down payment. Be careful though, sometimes these tools that can help home buyers get into homes can be expensive, so be sure to ask your lender about the costs and any other downsides that may be associated with these tools. When interest rates are high, many often assume that they can't or should not buy a home because of the high interest rates. Look, high interest rates can surely create budgeting problems, but a good realtor might be able to help negotiate a lower interest rate during the purchase of a home. Although an interest rate buy-down may only help for a couple years, the way interest rates go up and down, it could be a good way to get you into a home sooner rather than later, which could be a huge deal given the way home prices seem to keep rising and rising these days. Another issue here is that when home buyers wait to purchase, they often fail to realize the cost of waiting. Additional years of rent or living in your mom's basement are one issue, but another issue is that real estate prices historically increase at about 4% each year as an average. So if you hold off just a couple years waiting for rates to fall and you pay, say, 8% more on a home, you may end up costing yourself a lot of dough, especially when you consider that refinancing is often an option when rates do fall. The next one is failing to talk to a lender before you start looking for homes. Searching for homes is an emotional process, and it's an easy process to get started on. Simply open up your laptop or pick up your phone and just start looking. But sometimes what's easy isn't always what's good. However, the reality is that searching for homes should start with determining how much home you can afford. So, before you start looking at homes you dream about moving into, connect with a few lenders and get pre-approved so that you know how much home you can actually afford. I've seen broken hearts when a home buyer has champagne taste and a beer budget. Protect yourself here and speak with the lender before you do that daydreaming about moving into your brand new home. Many of these avoidable mistakes deal here with failure, but my goal is to help you succeed in the home buying process. So show your support for my efforts by hitting the like and the subscribe buttons, and click that little notification bell if you'd like more information like this. Don't assume that you understand the home buying process simply because you bought a home sometime in the past. The home buying process changes significantly over time, and even more so from state to state. So if you bought a home, say, 10 years ago in Illinois, don't assume the process is going to be the same for a home purchase in Florida today. The entire process can be very different, and failing to recognize this can create all sorts of headaches during the home buying process. Check your credit report before, important, before beginning the home buying process. So many of us have skeletons in our credit closets that we aren't even aware of. Maybe that store credit card that you save 15% on for a purchase three years ago never got paid. Or maybe there was an auto payment that wasn't properly recorded. Maybe there's a clerical error for a charge that isn't even yours. Things happen, and they might easily be corrected if you simply take a look. Go online. One website you can easily check your credit score at is annualcreditreport.com. You're going to need to deal with these issues sooner or later. Failing to deal with them before you get into the home buying process is one avoidable mistake that I see all too often, causing all sorts of delays for home buyers. While we're on the topic of credit, throughout the process of buying a home, avoid making any significant purchases whatsoever. That means no new furniture, that means no fancy appliances, and definitely avoid that brand new Corvette. Any major purchases can completely derail the purchase of home and cost you a lot of money in the process. Buying more home than you can afford is a huge mistake. Lenders will pre-qualify or pre-approve you for a given dollar amount for a home, but it's important to remember that this number is usually the maximum, the maximum amount that they'll give you. That does not mean that that's the amount you can afford. Only you can determine how much home you can actually afford. When the bills start coming in and there's more month left than money, 
the lender is going to be long gone and you'll be left with some difficult choices. So be honest with yourself here and don't buy more home than you can afford based on your budget and your habits. Now you may think I'm biased here, but as a realtor for many years, I'm well aware of the consequences of using the wrong realtor or not using one to advocate for you when buying a home. A realtor is the one who guides you through the home buying process. They should be providing good advice for selecting a home, for negotiating, for managing the process from showing to inspections and all the way through closing. A good realtor can surely save you endless headaches and tens of thousands of dollars, easily outweighing the potential expense of their services. But of course, a bad realtor can cost you that money. In addition, they can create all sorts of problems. So why not just go to the listing agent of the home that I'm interested in? Won't that save me some money? Well, it's not that simple. While it's true that you might not have to pay that money, the seller may already be offering compensation for a realtor to bring them buyers and to meet your needs to buy their home. In addition, who do you think that listing agent is really working for? I mean, they'll be happy to do it because they'll just put the money that's set aside for the buyer's agent in their pockets. But do you think they're going to negotiate for your best interest? Well, they could, but I wouldn't bank on that. Finding a good realtor takes time, so do your research. Get online and locate a few realtors that have experience, like a lot of experience. When you're checking them out, be sure to look for more than just a cool Facebook page and a fancy bio. Some of the bigger real estate websites will show a realtor's sales, so check to ensure that there are plenty of sales and sales in the area that you want to live in. Before we get to what I consider two of the most avoidable mistakes, I've been a local realtor for many years here in Central Florida, but I've got numerous connections across the country. So if you've got real estate needs anywhere at all, either leave a comment in the comment section below or simply pick up the phone and give me a shout. You might be able to buy a home with low money down, and that's important. However, it's also important to note that the more money you have when you start the process, the better off you're likely to be down the road. Some of these first-time homebuyer programs and down payment assistance programs are great, but they can also be very expensive. Lenders like certainty that they're going to get their money back, so the more secure they are on this, the less expensive that that money may be to you. So every dollar you save could save you hundreds of dollars over the life of the loan in addition to allowing you the option to simply purchase a nicer home. Having a higher down payment could get you a lower interest rate and, important and, the need for a down payment assistance program. One of the worst, most avoidable mistakes that I see home buyers make is the failure to understand the many expenses that are going to occur during the home buying process. While it's true that many of the expenses of the home buying process are wrapped up in the mortgage, there are many others that are simply not. For instance, a home inspection may run you 500 to 1,000 bucks. A survey for a small lot could get you for another 600. There are all sorts of fees to set up utilities like electric, water, and internet. There are all sorts of inspections that your realtor may encourage you to have done in an effort to help protect your money too. So early on in the process, speak with your realtor about what expenses you should anticipate incurring as you embark on this very expensive process. Failure to recognize the costs before they occur might be the greatest of all the failures that I've spoken of today. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.